imagining success, imagining the steps to climb. We've released five albums. One of them was an EP, but we'll count that as an album. So we released in 2002, 2006, 2010, 2015 and 2020. And so we've released a total of 48 original songs, but we've released 49. The reason that that extra song is because one of them is a cover of a 1980 song called The Breakup Song. We've got drummer Alex Madigan. He lives in New South Wales. So recording's interesting. He also sings. So he does a lot of backup vocals in the band. Then we have um, Andrew Stenhouse. He is a keyboard player and he also writes music and a pianist. Then we have Michael Stenhouse, his brother. He plays bass and does a lot of production of the music because he's got his own little studio as well. Then we have Mick Durant. He is a guitarist extraordinaire, very talented player. And then there is moi, who is on vocals. And I play a little bit of guitar, but only for the purposes of writing music. Well, that's a very controversial thing because it's hard to say because everybody's got different talents. But I would say the single biggest musical talent of the band is Mick. Mick has got a really good musical pedigree. He's a very understated but very talented player. He comes from semi-famous musical stock because his uncle played in a famous South Australian band called The Stars. And he actually also understands music very well, which is a rare combination to have like a full-on creative ability, but also to understand what's going on with music itself. But our drummer is very talented, our keyboard player is also talented, and so is our bass player. They've all got different talents, but I'd say Nick. I'm 47 now, and I started when I was 14. 33 years. Well, I think for a young music maker, I think you have to enjoy the instrument you're playing, and I think you have to listen widely. So, listen to lots of different sorts of music. Don't get stuck in your one sort of music listening, but if you decide that you like a particular sort of music, then try hard at that sort of music. But I think the most important thing for a young musician is to listen to other music and uh, be open-minded. A song called Rockstar for a Day. And that went into the charts don't ask me how. It ended up as in the French radio charts at number 87 on an online chart called Top Charts. But it was after we did give it some promotion on Spotify where it got heavily promoted and somehow ended up getting played in France and then a bit in Spain. And it still pops up in TikTok as well where it, it seems to get a lot of views. Why? It might have been the sound. It starts with a huge stadium roar sound effect. Like it's supposed to be the sound of a rock star coming on stage and this goes wild and then we go into it and it's got arguably the best piece of big room instrumentation in any song we've ever produced. And that was also because we used a reference piece which was a Wings track called 1984 or it might have been 1985. Anyway, something like that. And we use that as a reference to try and get a certain sound in the mid section, which is often called the middle eight. And in that section, also the guy who was playing bass at the time, which was a friend of mine called Craig, he pulled out an amazing bass riff. And it really set that piece on fire. And I think that's part of the reason why it was so successful. Other than that, I have no clue. inspired by Midnight Oil. Midnight Oil and Pink Floyd are my two biggest pieces of inspiration. I grew up with that music and particularly the oils having such a raw social passion. That combined with an experimental 
attitude and creation of music. So with this album down here, 10 through 1, which I'll just show you, this album here, they got this young 21 year old to produce it for them, a complete unknown. He was actually an engineer, his name, Nick Launay. And what happened is they went to, to England and to record this album and they had a bunch of ideas and some fully produced, well, fully developed songs. And they went into the studio and with this young buck, they produced an album that sounded absolutely off the scale in terms of experimental sound. He took what they had and turned it into 10 through one. And it was like a really monumental change for them as a band. It put them on the international stage. Hectic, in a good way. Mm. Dave, your father got a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm for the band. And I think that's great because it rubs off on the rest of the band as well. There's always something going on, even when we think it's quiet, Dave's in the background doing something, and next time you see him, there's something else happening. There's a film clip, there's a recording, there's a website, there's a Spotify. It's hectic, but it's really fun because there's always something happening. Well, we have written a whole bunch of songs which are being currently developed further. So we have written a further nine songs for our, our new album, which is our sixth album. And they are being developed at the moment. So we're certainly in the process of developing and recording a whole, a whole host of new songs. And that is being done right now. We're releasing our first single off this album in, on the 17th of June. So it's all actually pre-loaded into Spotify and the film clip is just being finished at the moment and that'll be pre-loaded into YouTube, ready for release on the 17th of June and they will be concurrently released to radio stations and all the digital outlets.